Welcome back! This is Sabrina with Eden and Ivy Artisan Handmade Soaps. The soap I'm making today is called Citrus Smoothie. I'm using kumquat and champagne fragrance oils, and the result will be an exotic, sugary blend of citrus and a colorful tiger stripe swirl. The colorants I'm using are Titanium Dioxide, Magic Yellow Mica from the Conservatory, Tangerine Mica from the Conservatory, a mix of Tangerine Mica from the Conservatory and Electric Bubblegum Pink Mica from Brambleberry, Apple Martini Mica for the lighter green from the Conservatory, and Hydrated Chrome Green from Brambleberry for the darker green color. My lye water and oils are both at room temperature, so I'm going to go ahead and get things mixed up. Some soaping resources recommend soaping at temperatures between 90 and 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is also 32 to 37 degrees Celsius. I prefer to make soap at temperatures closer to 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 degrees Celsius. If I were making soap without any colorants and without any fragrances, I'd likely stick to higher temperature recommendations, but because my intent is to make brightly colored soap scented with an amazing fragrance oil, I stick to the lower temperatures. The higher the temperature when you begin soaping, the faster the soap will thicken up. The lower the temperature when you begin, the slower it'll take the soap to thicken up, which means you have a lot more time for colorful designs. Soaping at higher temperatures encourages gel phase, an optional phase your soap may go through. Gel doesn't really affect the final product of the soap as far as usability goes. It does have an effect, however, on the appearance of the soap. Soaps that have gelled tend to be shinier, darker, with brighter colors than their non-gelled counterparts. Hotter soap batter is more likely to go through the gel phase than cooler soap batter, though a myriad of different factors can affect the likelihood of a soap heating up and going through gel phase. Additives with sugar such as goat's milk, honey, or beer are likely to cause the soap to heat up. Certain fragrance oils or essential oils are likely to cause the soap batter to accelerate and heat up as well. Some soapers encourage gelling by insulating their finished soap with towels and or heating pads. Some soapers discourage gel by placing their finished soap in the fridge or freezer overnight. I'm ambivalent. I make my soap and set it on the counter overnight with nothing to encourage or discourage gelling. My only word of caution is regarding soaping at too high a temperature. If you soap above temperatures of 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 48 degrees Celsius, you run the risk of your soap seizing, turning into a soaping volcano, or creating heat tunnels developing in that soap batter. Additives to your soap batter could cause the soap to heat up too much and the result is a scalding lava flow or dangerous bubbles of extremely hot soap batter. This is not something you want to deal with. For this soap, I added the scent after dividing out the soap batter into equal portions. I did not want the top white portion to be scented. The kumquat fragrance oil I'm using is known to slow down trace, and I wanted the piping to be set up enough to pipe shortly after I was done cleaning up. Once the colorants and scents were thoroughly mixed, I began pouring the soap batter in a stripe down the center of the mold. I made sure to alternate colors, beginning with dark green, then the blood orange color, the lemon color, the lime color, and then the tangerine color. Halfway through, I alternated the colors and tapped down the mold. Once my funnel cups were nearly empty, I scraped them out and tapped down the mold one last time. Then I cleaned up my soaping area and prepared to pipe the top of the soap. The citrus smoothie soap scent reminded me of a sugary cocktail or a high-end smoothie. I knew the bottom three-fourths of the soap would be very colorful, so I wanted the top to be stark white in contrast. I wanted it to evoke a whipped cream topping with glitter, sugar, crystals, sugar pearls, and orange wedge slices. I used a large open star piping tip to create the top. I waited until the batter set up before I began piping. I didn't include any fragrance in the white piping for two reasons. One, it could slow down the batter and I wasn't willing to stay up all night waiting for it to finish. And two, the fragrance tends to cause the batter to yellow slightly and I wanted the white top to remain crisp and bright. Once I finished piping the top, I added green glitter, 
grapefruit glitter and tangerine glitter from the conservatory. They sell tester sized glitters for 99 cents, and the testers will last you quite a while. I picked up quite a few the last time I placed an order. The conservatory is a shop that requires you to purchase a certain amount of product in order to place an order. So if you're close but you don't want to go over by much, try adding a few sample size glitters or colorants to your order to push you into that dollar amount. I purchased the grapefruit glitter, not expecting to really use it. It's actually such a gorgeous color that it inspired the ruby red grapefruit color in the tiger stripe swirl. I tried to match the soap color to the glitter color as close as possible. I think the addition of that color actually added the biggest color pop to the soap. I'm really pleased with the resulting color and I'm happy that I purchased the glitter on a whim. Serendipity strikes again. I was so excited to cut the soap. I made two batches of soap that night, this one and one named Equality. The video is already up on YouTube for that one. The fragrance oil I used in the other soap caused it to take forever to harden up, so I ended up beginning the citrus smoothie soap hours after I made Equality, but I ended up cutting this one days earlier. It always makes me happy when the embeds are aligned perfectly and aren't cut by the soap cutter. I made sure to use the lines scored on my soap mold when placing the embeds, and the attention to detail did pay off. It's not often that all of the soapy planets align and the perfect bar of soap is made, but it just so happened to occur with this batch. The colorants all turned out exactly how I wanted them to turn out, and the tiger stripe swirl looks incredible. Even the result of me tapping down the mold halfway through the process caused the soap to level out and I'm thrilled with how it looks. I could not think of a single thing I'd change. All in all, I'm extremely pleased by the end result. The scent is an exotic, sugary, citrusy, energizing, and uplifting fragrance. It's sweet with enough green notes to also feel fresh and clean. It's a wonderful summery fragrance with a great throw and long staying power. I hope you enjoyed the making, cutting, and reveal of Citrus Smoothie. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like and subscribe. I have some great soapy ideas coming up. This is Sabrina with Eden & Ivy Artisan Handmade Soap. See you soon!